Hello, this is Kevin and Janet Bean. You're about to watch God Has His Way. God will have His way in your life. We pray that this will be a blessing to you. Amen. Hello, everybody. This is uh, the Healing Ministry. Of course, if you've been following us, you know that my name is Kevin and my wife Janet runs the camera. And she's a minister as well. Now, she can't run the camera and be up here at the same time. So, today we are going to talk about, of course, we're going to be talking about Jesus Christ. We're going to be in Philippians. And we're going to be talking about knowing that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And today we are going to use this LCD screen and so that you can follow along. And so let's invite God into this and let's get started. Father Jesus, we ask you to be with us today. Of course, we know that you're here. We know that your, your, your word is good. And when you tell us something, we take it as, as the truth. And we know in our spirit and our heart that, that uh, you can't lie to us. And that you're the God of the universe. And when you say you're going to do something, that means you're going to do it. So... We ask you to be with us and strengthen us during this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we've got lots to talk about today. Let's get started. Today, of course, I said we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be in Philippians, and we're in chapter 4. And we are going to start out with Scripture, and we are going to be on verse 12. And I'm just going to read this uh, from what's on the screen. I know how to be abased, and I know also how to abound in everything, and in all things have I learned the secret both to be filled and to be angry, both to abound and to be in want. I can do all things in him that strengthen me. Now stop there. We're talking about somebody here who knows what it's like to be hungry. We're talking about somebody here who knows what it's like to need, to be in need constantly. Or to just absolutely just be bored and not have anything to do. That can be, that can be hard on a person. Maybe you're out of a job and you're sitting at home and you're bored. We know what that's like around here. We've been in your shoes. We're not talking about anything that we haven't been through ourselves. I want you to know that that uh, this all comes from Jesus Christ that comes out of me. There's been no preparation for this. God just told me what He wanted me to say, and I'm, um, I just opened the book and went to the Scripture, and we turned this film and the camera on. So that you know that everything comes from God today. Of course, every day. Jesus Christ knows what you're going through. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord, Jesus is allowing you to be tested. Now, it says in the book, and I'm going to put this on the screen, it says in the book that Jesus Christ Himself does not test us. But when we are tested... That we should look at it as pure joy. Now how do we get tested if Jesus Christ isn't testing us? What happens is, is, and I'm just going to use a very brief detail, very simple explanation here so that you can follow. We're only tested by the things that are in us. The evil, the unclean things that are in us, we are tested on. In other words... If you go into a store and you lack, there's severe lack in your home, and you don't have any money to buy anything, and you're tempted to take what's in the store, you're tempted to steal what's in the store, that is a test. God did not put the desire to take in you. This was already there. And so God is allowing you to be tested to show yourself what's in yourself, what needs to be cleansed from within. So, when you go through this test, you have to pass it. 
Because if you don't pass the test, if you don't steal the food while you're in the store, you've passed the test. But if you do steal the little smallest thing, or you are so overcome with the desire to steal, even when you leave the store, if you have it stolen, you're still going to be tested until that desire has been washed out of you. You see where I'm coming from here. So it's not Jesus Christ who tests you. you uh, he allows you to be tested because this is already in you. I know, I know these things. The unclean things that were in me had to be washed out before God could use me in this capacity. Boredom. Boredom is something that you, you fight if you're out of a job and you're thinking, is God really there? Is God ever going to answer my prayer? Is God, is God going to do this for me? Is God going to do that for me? God has not put that in you. God has not put that, oh, let's say, uh, that question in your mind that was already there in you. It was already in you, that doubt. And God is showing you that you have this doubt. And that it needs to be cleansed from you. It needs to be washed away. And the way that it gets washed away is by you having the faith. And when God comes in and does for you, say you finally get a job, now you know that your, te your faith had been tested and God came through for you. And this is how it's washed away. By God coming through for you. You see that God did what He promised you He was going to do. And now the question in your mind that you had, is God going to get me a job? Is God going to get me out of this situation? Is God going to provide for me? When that provision show up, you know that it came from God, and then that desire is washed away. Washed completely away. Now, let's go on. I'm going to I'm going to switch this over if you'll give me just a moment. I'm going to uh, give you Job. We're going to go to Job. Ah, I'm sorry. I need to put this book down and do it right. There's Job, and we're going to go to uh, second chapter and verse two. I think it's the second chapter, it might be twelfth chapter. Hang with me a little bit here. Like I said, this is this is uh, not what I planned on doing today. I didn't know what I was going to do today, really. What do you do? Okay, Job says, Job is talking to God, and Job has been through one major test. You have to realize that, uh, depending on what you know about Job, Job would have been considered a billionaire, B, with a B, billionaire in, in, in our today's standards. Job had a big family. Uh, uh, they measured their wealth by land and by uh, livestock and uh, a certain amount of camels, a certain amount of cows and goats and whatever. And camels probably went for a lot of money back then and if you needed a camel you bought it off Job. And Job had a lot of animals and whatever you needed to buy Job had. And so people were constantly coming to Job to buy things. And Job, Job was supplying everybody's needs. Well, that made Job a very rich man. And the devil comes along and he says, You know what, God? Job wouldn't serve you if you know you allowed him to be tested. If you took, if you took your protection off of him, this man would fall apart. And so God said, Okay, we're going to allow Job to be tested. Do you feel like Job sometimes? Well, I, I do. I'll be honest with you, Janet and I have been tested to the brink. I mean to the breaking point. I told God, I said, God, I want to be in your perfect will. Do you know that there's different levels of being in God's will? You don't have to be in God's perfect will. 
But you can be in God's will. And I pray for you. If you're not in God's will, you're in trouble. But you've got to be in God's will somewhere along the way. Not everybody can be President of the United States. Uh, let's say, uh, I want to be, you know, I want to be part of the political system. Uh, and I want to be in the political system's perfect will. And the perfect will would have to be being president, right? Well, let's compare this to God's will. Being, being in God's perfect will, you are going to have all the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, there, you are going to have uh, all of God's favor. Whatever somebody comes to you with a problem, you're going to be able to help them through Jesus Christ and in Jesus' name. You're going to be able to cast out demons. You're going to be able to heal the sick. You're going to be able to prophesy, teach, preach, discern, uh, whatever. You're going to have visions. You're going to have dreams. You're going to be able to interpret. You're going to be able to do all these things if you're in God's perfect will. But to be in God's perfect will means that you're going to be tested. Oh, oh, are you going to be tested. Woo! And even if you're in a lower will, if you're just in God's will, you're still going to be tested to a point. But if you ask to be in God's perfect will, and you want to be standing up here in front of the camera, if you want to be receiving phone calls, and you want to be praying for people, and you want to be laying hands on the sick, you are going to find out what you have in you. You're going to find out what it is that you need to get rid of, and what you need to add to you. And this is what Job went through. Job wanted to be in God's perfect will. But you can't be in... You cannot just be given these things by God. If you want to be President of the United States, people aren't going to vote for you unless you stand in front of the camera. If you want to be President of the United States, people aren't going to put you in that position unless you have the credentials. You see, you're not going to be President of the United States if you've never been a Senator or a Congressman. Very unlikely. Sometimes, this is just my opinion, sometimes I think they need to just clean house and start out with people who have never been in the Senate or the Congress. Somebody who has a prophetic insight through God. That's what we need in the White House. Not going to go there anymore. I'm going to stick with what God has for me. So, Job has just been through hell. Literally. The devil did everything except kill Job. The devil took all of God's, all of Job's family. Almost all of Job's livestock was gone. Job had terrible boils all over him. He was sick. He couldn't get up. He couldn't eat. This was a period of about maybe nine months. The Job. This man lost everything. And Satan was hoping that Job would curse God and say, God, you know what? I hate you. I don't want to have nothing to do with you. You failed me. God, you failed me. And then the devil would have eased up on him. But he wouldn't have been in God's perfect will if he did that. And I'm not going to let the devil steal that from me. And the devil, you're not going to let the devil do that to you. Listen here. Don't give up. Don't give up on where you're at with God. You're going through hell right now. I know you are. We're going to talk about people that have called me. And I'm going to share some stories with you here in just a minute. So don't leave me. You say, why should I go through this? Why should I put myself in this position where God is going to allow me to go through these things? Why can't I just live my life? You can. You can. But you can't live your life through Jesus Christ. You can live for the devil that way. Everybody 
who is a Christian goes through a certain amount of testing. Anybody who tells you that being a Christian is easy is a liar. Because I'm going to tell you, being a Christian is one of the hardest things that you'll ever do. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. I'll, I'll guarantee you that. Very difficult. I found out who I was made of, who I was, and what I was made of. And so did Janet. And we're still being tested, but now we're on the other side of this. And now the blessings are coming in. And this is what you have to look forward to. And being blessed by God is the greatest thing in the world. The testing doesn't last that long. The people who, you know, the people who came uh, with Moses during the Exodus, you know, they could have went right straight across the desert and went to the promised land in just a matter of a couple months. You know, they could have just went, boom, straight to it. But they had things, they couldn't go to the promised land until they were cleansed. And this is what you're going through right now. If you're out of a job, and you're sitting at home, and you feel like you're wasting away, you're being tested. What you've got to do is that you've got to realize that you cannot do this on your own. If you want a miracle, then you've got to be in God's will. And this is the perfect time for you to be in God's will. Once you... Now you're thinking to yourself, well, you don't have time for this. It only takes a minute to say a prayer. To say, Father God, I want to be in your perfect will. And mean it. Or, Father God, I want to be in your will. I want to be in, in your will somewhere. And, and I want to give these problems to you. And I want to be cleansed. And I want to be the person that you want me to be. And then God says, okay, I'll take these problems from you. And I'll take care of you. And somehow, month after month after month, you're going to make it. Guaranteed. You are going to make it. There's going to be money coming in from places that you never expected. This is the God part of it. And while you're sitting there, God's going to allow you to face your demons. The spirits. It's not easy. These are hard times. You're going to hear some stories here in just a little bit about some people who faced some demons and how their lives turned out. And I'm going to tell you a few things about me. It's going to be, there's some exciting stories ahead, so just hold on a minute. Job, after he gets all through this, God, you know, he's cleansed of all the, the doubt that he ever had about God by now. And his sores are all being healed. I mean, just like that. Miracle. And so God is talking to, to Job. And it says here in chapter 42 and 1, Then Job answered Jehovah and said, I know that thou canst do all things, and that no purpose of thine can be restrained. Who is this that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that which I understood not. Now what's that mean? I know it's that thou canst do all things, and that no purpose of thine can be restrained. Let's read this out of the uh, NIV. Maybe it'll be a bit easier for you to understand. That was the American Standard Version. It says in the NIV, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. Now that makes a little bit more sense to you and me. Job is saying to God, I know that you can do all things. And that I can do nothing for myself. 
Now, does that break your ego, mister, ma'am? Because you're thinking right now that you're in charge. That you have been in charge of your life up to this point. And look around you and tell me how good a job you've done. On your own. Now maybe, maybe you grew up with a silver spoon in your mouth. Maybe you were born into a rich family and you don't have any financial problems. But let's take a look at other areas. How are your relationships? How do you feel inside about your life? Let me ask you this. Do you feel fulfilled? Or has your life just been one big hangover after the next? Do you feel fulfilled? That's what I'm asking you. Do you feel like you have a purpose? What are you doing with the money that God gave you? You say, well, God didn't give me that money. My dad did. No, sir. Uh-uh. No, ma'am. God gave it. God gave you everything that you have right now. The question is, are you being a good steward of it? Are you spending all your money on you for your pleasure? Or are you helping somebody? God knows if you're rich, we could use the money over here in this ministry because we put it to good use. Believe me, we got a plan for the money. The money's coming though. We're not worried about the money anymore because God, you're going to see here that there are some prophecies that were said to us that we're going to read to you. Now, after Job was healed, God, in time, gave him back all of his livestock tenfold. And he was blessed with more children. I mean, the devil even took his, his kids. And everything had been restored. And Job became a multi-billionaire after this nine-month period of testing. He passed the test. He, he found out some things about himself, and God chewed him out pretty good. But see, we're all going to be chewed out by God eventually. God is going to get on us about some things. And it's good because... When God gets on you, it's because He corrects the ones He loves. And so if you're being corrected by God, and you know that you're being corrected by God, you can feel it, that's a good thing. Because God is, is teaching you and correcting you. Just like you correct your children because you love them. And you want to see them you know, go on the right path. That's what God's doing for you. Unfortunately, too many kids... Parents uh, get on their kids uh, just because they want them to shut up, <laughs> get out of their face. But that's not what this is about. All right. Now we're gonna go somewhere else here. I want to share with you something extraordinary. I mean, I want to share with you something extraordinary. Oh man, this thing would have to do this right now. Oh, for crying out loud. Pause that thing, Janet. Okay. Okay, now, I'm going to share with you something that happened to me. And uh, this, this is why I had to talk to you first about being in God's will, or at least God's, part of God's will. You know, I've said before that, that, that Janet and I always wanted to be in God's perfect will. And that means we wanted to be perfect with God. When, when God the Father looks down at us and sees us, we want Him to see the reflection of His Son Jesus Christ. That's what a perfect will means. And uh, I believe Janet and I are in God's perfect will. And we plan on staying there. Of course, we've been through a lot of testing. We've been through the Job things. You know, we've been through the financial problems. Uh, we've had things taken away from us. 
uh, we've been corrected by God. And uh, it's been a struggle. I know a lot of things I needed to get rid of. A lot of things. You know, I realized a long time ago that I wanted to be in God's perfect will. And uh, I knew it was going to be tough. But I made it. And so is Janet. Janet's done a good job. And so, I started having dreams and visions a long time ago. And, uh, you know, I've got, I've got the gift of healing. If you don't already know that, and you, you need healing, you come to me, and I lay hands on you, or I talk to you over the phone, and God will heal you. It's happened uh, hundreds and hundreds of times. We've seen miracle after miracle in this ministry. And I know that's hard for people to believe. Uh, until you see it. We've, uh, you know, uh, cast uh, demons out of people. That's an experience. That's a real experience right there. Seeing somebody who is truly possessed by a demon and casting that demon out of that person. Whew, that's, that's really something to behold now. I want you to know. To be able to stand up here and give a message with no uh, prior knowledge of what I'm doing. You know, this, this has to come from God. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on to be able to help people in, in ways that, uh, you know, only, only God could do. And I have to be completely led by the Spirit. This, this takes a lot, of, a lot of prayer, a lot of personal time with God to be able to do these things. It doesn't happen overnight. Well, about eight months ago, God started to show me in visions and dreams. I had this vision and dream that uh, I'm, I'm with the Pope. And the uh, Pope's wearing white. And I'm, I'm, I'm close to him. But uh, there's a guy there who has a special gift and he's able to disappear and reappear. And when he disappears, nobody can see him. But I can see this guy. And I'm the only one that can see him. And he's walking around, and, and I can see where he's at, but nobody else can see him. They, they can walk right into this guy, walk right through him. And uh, it was, it's incredible, the gift that this guy has, you know, in my vision. And uh, so, so I figure out, that if I, if I stand there and I concentrate, I, my feet come off the ground. And, I, and I'm floating in the air. I'm like levitating. And finally, I can levitate all the way up to the ceiling. And in this building I'm in, it's a very high ceiling. I mean, I'm talking way up there. And uh, people can see me doing this. And they're amazed by it. And so finally, I get tired of being inside. And I go outside. And uh, I find out that not only can I levitate, but I can fly. And I mean, I'm flying, buddy. I'm, I'm flying and I'm passing up jets. And uh, I finally get tired of being way up in the air and I go out into outer space. And uh, I can go from planet to planet in just a matter of a minute or two. And it's unlimited of, of what I can do while I'm flying. And... Uh, God shows me this, this vision, and, and I mean, multiple times, over and over and over, the same thing. And uh, so, I asked Brian Gilliland, who is uh, the prophet on the front page of the website, and I asked him to interpret this dream. Now, I'm, I'm getting other prophetic words from people, and uh, I'm not even asking for them. And, but they're coming. Because I know this is of God. And this is Brian's interpretation of the dream. It's very interesting. From the early times man has wanted to fly. Even today, competitions are held to determine who can fly even a relatively short distance. So several hopefuls gather at a pier edge and girdered with the most bizarre trip of... Uh, uh, contraptions to act as wings they run and launch themselves off the edge of the pier 
Of course they plunge straight down into water below. Certainly in the natural man cannot design to fly like a bird. However, in the spiritual, not such restrictions are placed on those who dare to believe. Now what's Brian saying? He's saying in the natural, in the natural world, in the natural world, uh, people can't fly. I don't care what kind of contraption you put on yourself, whether you put on a set of wings or what it is, these people are going to this place. I've seen it on TV. It's hilarious. It's hilarious to watch these people. And they got this mess on, this contraption Brian's talking about, and they run and they jump off the ledge of this hill to see how far they can fly. Well, they maybe they fly 10 or 15 feet, and then they go down into <laughs> there's water below, and they smash and crash and burn into the water below. Now, of course, they're not way up in the air. The, the water's maybe 20 feet or so below them. But nobody can fly. I don't care what contraption they make, nobody can fly. Now, when you're talking about the spiritual realm, then now we're going to go on. Uh, of course... They plunge straight down into the water below. Certainly in the natural, man cannot uh, design to fly like a bird. However, in the spiritual, no such restrictions are placed on those who dare to believe. From on high, the air is pure and the view spectacular. Greater meaning of situations is revealed when viewed from above. Escape is possible from the stress and problems of everyday life. It's kind of like if if you're if you're sitting up in the bleachers of a of a game, a basketball game or something, you can see what's going on better from in the bleachers really than you can if you were down on the floor. Now that doesn't mean you can be a referee. This is why there's this is why there's so many arguments at games because the spectators can see what's going on sometimes better than the referee. And this is this is sort of the point Brian's making. Now, spiritually, when I take off and fly, the air is clean up there. There's no noise down there. There's no corruption up there. I'm with God up there. Okay, let's go on. It, you're escaping stresses and problems of everyday life when you're up there in the spiritual. Okay, now let's let's get let's get on to the to the dream interpretation itself. Your dream is a rep representation of the spiritual maturity your refusal to settle for anything short of God's best, your deep desire to break free from the chains of circumstance that seek to restrict and hinder you. The dream also points to a time of deep communion with God and a new and existing ability to see people as they really are. Now look, people, you've got to spend time with God. And I'm going to be very honest with you about this. I put God first. I love God, and my wife loves God. I think about what Jesus Christ went through for, for me on the cross, and it breaks my heart. Oh, I'm not kidding you. I can't understand I can't it. Because He's my Father, and my friend. And to see him up there on that cross and going through what he went through for me, I, I just, I don't know, man, it moved me. And I'm going to give this man, I'm going to give this man my life. And that's the way I feel about God. I, I know God very well because I spend time with God. And God knows me. I have deep, communion with God. That's quality, quiet time with God. Now, let's go on.
you will see through any shame, sham, or deceit, any falsehood, any shallowness, and any control issue. You will be able to read their mail within an instance of meeting them. No one be able to hide from their, to be hide from your spiritual eyes, and much ungodliness will be uncovered and exposed. Satan's traps and snares will be instantly uh, reconcilable, and he will greatly fear the power that you will possess. Let's stop there for a minute. People, when you come in to God and you ask God for something, I don't care what it is, God knows who you are instantly. You cannot fool God. And therefore, you cannot fool me. Because I just know. I know what you're about. I know when you're lying to me. I know who you are. Like, like Brian says, I have already read your mail, so to speak. You can't fool me. I want you to know that going in. I don't judge you, but I know what's going on. And it comes from God, of course. This is just part of the spiritual gifts that I have. Let's go on. Uh, much ungodliness will be uncovered and exposed. Satan's traps and snares will be instantly uh, recognizable, and he will greatly fear the power you possess. You will achieve much, much by methods you have not yet considered, and you, you shall be a vital link in a strong chain that will have huge kingdom impacts. You have sought God with all your heart. You are totally committed to serve Him however and wherever you choose. He has seen the frustration, the impatience, and the determination that defines your very existence. You are totally blessed called and chosen as one of God's generals during this next and crucial period in history. The final one before he comes again. Let's stop there. Things are going to start happening, not just with me, but all over the world. Do you know that God is getting ready to come and get you? Or do you just think, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. You know, a bunch of garbage. God's getting ready to make a shift. There's going to be a shaking in this world. Some of the people that have been on top are going to be on the bottom. For instance, some of these evangelist preachers that you see on television who want nothing but your money are going to be exposed for who they are and they are going to be removed from office via Jesus Christ. Lots of you out there, I hope you're watching, because you're getting ready to fall. Your kingdom is coming down. And people like me, who certainly seek God with all of our heart and all of our soul, are coming up from the bottom and we're going to shoot all the way to the top and we are going to be able to finally show you the right way and help you through Jesus Christ and you are going to see miracles and signs and wonders everywhere we go I'm not the only one there are several people out there God has put these people in uh, in certain str strategic places throughout the world as like a chess game. And I'm glad to be not the only one. There are hundreds and hundreds of us who have these abilities. But don't try to lie to us. Come to us and be humbled. Couple yourself. 
because we are God's leaders. And we have been given the power and authority, just like the disciples were by Jesus Christ, to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Let's go on. Okay. God said, He says here that I've been impatient. I have been impatient. Are you chanting, champing at the bit like a like a horse, ready to just, you know, just bust through the gate and go? That's how I feel. I'm ready to go. I'm charged. I, I'm full of the Holy Spirit. I know what to do. I hear God's voice. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. There's a whole list of things that I could do. I can't think of anything I can't do. Including fly. <laughs> Let's go on. Okay. Uh, it says, uh, It is an awesome responsibility to have this mantle placed upon you. But then, you have known this for a long time. I have known this for a long time. Many have mocked, scoffed, and belittled you. They did exactly the same with Jesus. Prepared to be a warrior, prepared to be a general in this unlikely army, and prepared to fly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I hope this is happening to you. I pray this is happening to you. I pray that you have chosen to be in God's perfect will. I have the Holy Spirit all over me talking about this. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to what Aaron has to say. i eh, got some stupid emails here. Okay, this is from Aaron Vondresky. She's also on the front page. I did not tell Aaron anything. Aaron sent me this this morning. Unlikely. I opened it up while I was there. It says, Kevin, the Spirit of the Lord says, Your time is now. Watch how, excuse me, I begin shift the waters in your life to rearrange the orders of things to my favor. Not Kevin's favor, but in God's favor. I'm here to serve God and to be in His favor. Okay. Be subject to my possibilities. This day, says the Lord. Not tomorrow, now. I'm ready now. Right this second. Okay. <coughs> you have looked at certain areas and said in your heart, that's impossible. The Lord says, ha, not so. I am a God with, with, I, am, oh it says, I, am I a God with limitations, my son? He's, he's asking, am I a God that has limitations? Of course not. Am I a man that I should be boxed in within the confines of the human existence? That came from God. Aaron doesn't talk like that. <laughs> We're looking at God like, you know, like he's just a regular guy. You know, if, if, if a man can't do it, then why should we turn to God? That's what we're saying. You know, I've heard people say, oh man, you know, we, we, we've got this problem and we've done everything we know to do and so we can't do it, so let's pray about it. God, have we gotten to the point now where we're praying about it? That needs to be the first thing we do when we get a problem, is pray about it because God can do all things. The very existence of God is a miracle and breaks all of the laws of physics. All of them. Physics don't. The laws of physics don't exist around Jesus Christ. Let's go on. Am I a God that I should be boxed in within the confines of the human existence? Laugh with me today, my son. Laugh in the face of all impossibility. The word for you in this season that is very strong, Kevin, is move. There will be extreme movement in this season. Things that have seemed stagnant will be moved and you will be placed on the very top of everything that has hindered you. 
For God says, I am putting you up and over in this season. Rejoice and be not weary, my precious son, for I do see you and love you. Praise God. Th thank you, Lord, for using me. I'm going to tell you, when you come to this ministry, you're going to see some awesome stuff happen. I had a woman call me yesterday. We were watching a movie. I talked to her before. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'm not going to really go into her situation. Except to tell you that her house was burnt down. Partially burnt down. And I mean, I have, I have come across some horrific situations. Having your house burnt down by somebody is what happened to this woman. She's an African American female who's had her house burnt down. She called me for comfort. And the gift that God has just given me do you know that God showed me clearly who burnt her house down? You cannot hide. If you have done something against God's people, you will be found out. Because I know who you are. I saw their faces clearly. There were four of them. And I, show, I told this woman their names and what they were wearing. And I described him to a T. Perfectly. Perfectly. I pray they go to jail. And when you call me and you ask me a question about a crime... You're going to get the straight answer from me. I'm going to tell you where your loved ones are and who put them there. If you want to know who is the corrupt one in your family or at your job, I'm going to tell you. Not because I'm so smart, but because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because I have been put in God's perfect will. And I have been tested and tested to the breaking point. To the breaking point. And I know whose I am. You want to know who God is? Come to me. Humbly. I'm going to tell you some mistakes people make. I'm going to leave that on there. I'm going to tell you some mistakes people make. And why they're not blessed. This is just one. When you come to me, I don't, I don't care whether you donate or not. Uh, God has, has given me this responsibility. And I am supposed to take care of you. And then God takes care of me. That's the way it works. But if God puts it on your heart that you are to donate or that you are to plant a seed, then you plant a seed. And the time to do it is before the miracle happens. Because that is giving in faith. Do not wait until you receive from God and then plant a seed because that is called paying for services rendered. That has nothing to do with faith. That is out of God's perfect will for you. You, what usually happens is is you've been told by God in your heart to donate. Now maybe you don't 
You don't get this. But it's for your own good. If you've been told by God to donate $200 or $20 or $2 and you say, well, if I donate that much money, then, then you know, it's going to run me short. So you don't do it and you give only part of what you're supposed to do. Then, then you're not going to receive your miracle. And you're going to blame me and you're going to say, I didn't receive my miracle. But you haven't received your miracle because it's your fault. Because you didn't do what God asked you to do. And God will even heal you or answer your prayer and then allow the devil to come in and steal it back. Just to show you that he can do it. But it's not going to stick until you do your part. You see what I'm getting at? I'm not telling you to donate. I'm not saying that you have to donate. What I'm saying is, is if God tells you to do something, do it. Whether it be donating to the ministry or whether it being, uh, being a blessing to us in another way. I'm telling you, there are miracles out there waiting for you. And you're going to claim them. But you've got to claim them in God's way. Not on in your way. No, not your way. God's way. I'm telling you, I've seen this happen over and over. People say, can I have your address so I can so I can send you a check? Yeah. And two, three weeks later, we still ain't seen a check. And I call you on the phone and I say, how are you doing? Well, no, I, you know, that day you prayed for me, uh, you know, I felt a lot better and I was healed. And then, you know, it was like a couple days later, you know, I, I was back to feeling the same way again. Well, whose fault is that? It's not my fault. I did my part. God did His part. You didn't do your part. You have to be obedient to God. If this is what God's calling you to do. God doesn't call everybody to do the same things. Do you know, and I, and I don't mean to go down a rabbit trail, but there are things that people do that literally, I mean really make God mad. And most of it has to do with greed. Greed. And, and not being, I hate to use that word humbled, but humbled. You know, humbled. You, you want to come in there with an attitude and, and you don't think that I already know these things about you. You know, I know what you're going to do. I know, I just, I just know. But I go ahead and do what God has for me to do. And whether you receive your miracle is up to you, not me. But you have to be in God's perfect will or in God's will and you have to be obedient to God. Job was obedient to God. The disciples were obedient to God and they were blessed. And I've been obedient to God and I am so blessed. And I've got all these wonderful spiritual gifts. And I can fly. Do you know that one day I was sitting at home and I was playing with the cell phone on the table and I, and I, I moved my hand toward the cell phone and the cell phone moved all by itself. I don't know what that's about. I have no idea. I haven't tried it since. I haven't tried it. I'm still digesting being able to see who does these crimes and things. I'm, I'm still I'm, I'm, I'm still enjoying this spiritual gift. I, I enjoy everything. And I just want to tell you, I want to pray for you right now. I'm not going to drag this out. I, I pray that this, this message has sunk into you. So what's the bottom line here, Kevin? bottom line is that the closer you get to God, 
the more like God you become. And God can do all things. I mean all things. And there's things that I can do that I haven't even tapped into yet because I, my imagination can't even go there. So if you need help, you come to this ministry and you're going to get help. But you've got to be obedient to God. Okay? It's a two-way street. A lot of people are going to hear this message and they're going to say, forget it. You know, if I have to donate, if I have to do what God tells me to do, you know, why, why should, you know, the, the people that were, uh, you know, were healed at the 5,000 and the people who ate the fishes and the bread, you know, they, they didn't donate, they didn't give nothing. No, but they received Christ that day. And they heard the word from God Himself. And they believed on God. And they gave their heart to God. And God knew that their heart was pure after they heard the message. And they received Christ. That's why they were healed. They were healed by their faith because they had just heard from God. And they believed. And there was other things that happened there. I mean, this was just an outline of a story. There was people that God didn't heal. People come to me and say, God healed everybody. No, God did not. God didn't. Jesus Christ did not heal everybody. Uh-uh. No, not everybody that came to Jesus Christ was accepted by Jesus Christ. No. That's another story. Anyway, I'm going to pray for you right now. Thank you, Aaron, for sending this. Thank you, Brother Brian, for sending this and for allowing me to use it. I pray, Father Jesus, that the doors open to people. That they'll come to this ministry with an open mind, an open Bible, and an open heart. Full faith. And, Father God, that they'll be honest. And that they'll be willing to receive from you. In Jesus' name. My number is 417-273-2036. I've done what Jesus Christ sent me to do. Amen. I pray you enjoyed this message. This is Kevin and Janet Bean. Our information is 417-273-2036. Our website is World Wide Web Miracle Now.com. You can catch us at 777 The Healer on the YouTube channel, and you can uh, subscribe to us. We have over 60 messages. We pray that you've been blessed. Feel free to call us anytime. Amen.